Aerial Transportation brings up the concept of global village to its best. People and cargo can now travel anywhere in a matter of hours. So it became an area of major importance uh, to the European Union today. In which to turn the aerial transportation more efficient appears a crop project, which is a new way of propulsion, a cheaper and environment friendly one. The project is led by UBI, among with several European partners, the University of Sheffield, the University of Modena and Reggio Emilia, the University of Bologna, and two companies, the Australian EAT21 and the German Grob Aerocraft. The project uh, will occur uh, for the next two years and will be led by the professor José Pascua of UBI. The public presentation of the crop project had happened in UBI at the 21st of January 2014 with the vice president of the university, Professor Anna Paula, the president of uh, engineering college, Mario Freire, and the president of the Department of Engineering and Electromechanics, Professor Abilio Silva. The concept of cyclo rotor gets its name to the cyclo trajectory that the shelves get in the air during the flight. These systems get the ability to change the direction of the propulsive force in 360 degrees in ways almost immediately, which allow the vehicles to take off vertically. For Europe, we have uh, to look in the worldwide world that is uh, uh, full of competition among partners. In this regard, uh, most of European industry, even in aeronautics, is being uh, uh, dismissed because competitor, competitors from China and from Brazil and America, from other parts of the world, are becoming increasingly, increasingly strong. So I think it is a, a good idea that the European Commission decide to fund this project because it can help strengthen the European position regarding this kind of industry. UBI is actually the promoter of uh, crop project. We have uh, been uh, analyzing cycloidal rotors and uh, the electrical rear discharge actuators, and our idea was to keep together with the, all the European partners that are working in this kind of uh, activities. And uh, for this regard, uh, we can have uh, uh, more support for the current uh, research activities here in, U in, uh, in UBI in Portugal. This cycloidal rotors has actually, uh, is actually a concept that has only been working for, let's say, uh, ships. Uh, that is called the Schneid, uh, Schneider, Voigt Schneider uh, propeller. But uh, the, it is envisioned that with this concept, we can uh, also be applied, it can also be applied to, for example, uh, vertical axis wind turbines for production of energy. So it uh, actually can span a bit to other areas of the research. I think it's uh, very important that uh, our uh, professors uh, uh, take this, uh, this knowledge from this uh, research and uh, transfer to the students. It's very important in this sense. Um, we are in charge of the work package that takes care of, of simulation. So we are going to simulate the structure, the aerodynamics and their interaction in order to provide uh, feedback to the designers of, of components and to the manufacturers. Uh, uh, feedback in terms of, of uh, structural loads, performances, and so on. Of course, we are in charge uh, of this work package in cooperation with other partners. Uh, it should be possible in uh, the next uh, uh, two or max three years, uh, it is possible to have uh, a prototype uh, in uh, 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 prototype, oper operative prototype, not the uh, uh, mock up, okay, but. Uh, it is a mm, very interesting project, but uh, a limited object, uh, so it sh sh should be possible in a, a very short time. We are leading actually work package uh, seven. It's about the dissemination exploitation of the crop project and will um, assist in many other tasks, for example, proof of concept and integration into aircraft uh, structures. About two years ago, I thought it would be about 25 years. I now think it's going to be about 10. Yes. So we've advanced so much in the last two years with this project, um, or with the science behind Cyclogyro, um, that I'm much more confident that as soon as we provide an unmanned vehicle, um, that can be tested and proved to be safe, uh, the move then to providing it as a passenger aircraft is more one of regulating the airspace to allow it. 
I think there's a lot of a lot of applications around, you know, um, as well as transportation. When you look at the demands for surveillance, in, in, in a, from a from a climate point of view, from a weather point of view, you know, you, you have a lot of demand for aircraft that need to be very efficient to have good manoeuvrability to be able to stay stationary. And I think whether that's search and rescue, whether it's you know lo lots of applications, you can see that even though they're not transport, would benefit from this kind of technology. They can be scaled up uh, to provide freight aircraft. So, for instance, FedEx could be using these things in swarms um, to deliver um, parcels and packages around the planet. Um, they could be used for, um, we say, Rettung's uh, vehicles. So they could be used for lifeboats um, off ships uh, when you scale them up. When you scale them down, they could fly inside buildings and go and look in smoke-filled rooms for casualties during a fire. They could go monitoring radiation in somewhere like Fukushima, um, a nuclear power plant that has been um, engulfed by water. They could find out what the radiation levels are before human beings go in. They could be used by the United Nations to follow and help refugees uh, so that they can see where there are minefields, provide light at night uh, so that they feel safe from soldiers. Um, tell them where to cross a river and so